Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. Jude and St. Paul's in Mild May. My name is Reverend James Hill, and I'm joined today by Stuart and John. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Good morning. The sun just comes out on my, into my it screen. Is. Yeah, it's very nice. It's nice to have the sun again. Um, yep. Yes, it's a cool, uh, cool-ish autumn day. Though it's going back mm. up to 18 later on this afternoon. This mm. isn't the weather report, mm. but... Um, I have to figure out what to wear um, at the beginning of the day because sometimes I'm 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 out and about. So uh, I do know the weather, but it's eight. It was eight this morning, um, mm -hmm. seven this morning. So it was a little bit chilly by England standards, anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we're going to chat for a few minutes while a few more people join the stream, and then mm -hmm. uh, we'll make a start with morning prayer today. We're concluding or getting close to the end of Acts, the book of Acts that we've been following over the last. A few morning prayers, and uh, we had harvest. We celebrated harvest last Sunday, so we had mm -hmm. a, a good celebration with the people who were there. And um, John, you were somewhere else, though, weren't you? Yeah, but we were with our friends in Colchester, um, where they were doing their harvest. Um, a rather larger congregation and um, quite a few children around, but mm. yeah, really nice to be with them again. And uh, again. Slightly different um, tradition, but uh, still evangelical. But uh, yeah, and uh, they've recently lost their, their their organist, so they had a, a group playing, and that was that was good as well. Yeah, uh, we also had both schools in the church last week, which was really good um, for the first time in you know three three plus years. So that was really great, uh, both Children's House and uh, St. Jude and St. Paul's School. Mm. And it was great just to be with the, the children again in the building. Um, mm. You know, there's about 160 or 150 or so of the St. Jude, St. Paul's, and there must have been, um, you know, 60 or 70 from Children's House. So, mm. yeah, it was great just to be together and to sing uh, some favorite Harvest songs, which we're all mm. very familiar with now. <laughs> Yeah, I love to, to to see when the children go across the road and the traffic has to be stopped, and the whole of the the, the church school troop across the road. And, yeah, a good reason for traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in the news at the moment, uh, there's lots of things happening. Um, uh, sadly, Ukraine has been um, attacked. Uh, you know, um, in terms of the some of the major cities, including um, Kiev mm -hmm. um, by Russia. And um, yeah, I think it puts a fresh anxiety in the whole country, obviously, but also internationally as well as the, the war escalates. Mm -hmm. so we get to include Ukraine as always in our, in our prayers. Um, Bank of England has had to step in a few times over the last few weeks um, because of various budget announcements. Um, so yeah, instability, I think, is probably the, the future, uh, short term anyways. And I think, you know, gen genuinely, uh, um, the cost of living crisis hasn't disappeared. It, in some ways, it's gotten worse for some people because of uh, mortgage prices going up by quite a considerable amount if you have to renew your mortgage, you know, if you don't have a it's due for yeah. Renewal, whatever. So, yeah, and also I think I'm not an economist, so I don't know these things very well. But um, I think there is instability for people who are looking to buy houses as well, because the cost, oh, of borrowing, yeah. cost of borrowing is so much more that mm -hmm. the things that you thought you could afford previously you can't now because you know it's not just a little bit more; it's hundreds of pounds more per month, which mm -hmm. most people can't do. So, yeah. Um. No, yes, I've been re reviewing the city. I was had a privilege yesterday afternoon to be up on the top of Primrose Hill. I don't know if you've ever been there. Fantastic view across the city. And I was there with a few others. We were just praying for London uh, and just thinking the ups and downs and some of the things that the City of London has been through over the years. Um, you can just see St Paul's now, a fairly small building compared to the others. Uh, a great privilege to be praying for our city, but actually in terms of the current 
turmoil um, that um, lots to pray for. Um, lots of new people in positions of authority uh, needing to be supported and prayed for and settled down um, in the times yeah. when uh, there are forces in the world that don't want things to settle down. Prayed for and, and, and challenged if necessary, I think as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, let's uh, make a start with with a hard prayer today. Oh God, make speed to save us. Oh Lord, make haste to help us. Let's keep a moment of quiet together as we gather ourselves before God. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Amen. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You're seated at God's right hand in glory. Amen. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 77. I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, that he may hear me. In the day of my trouble I seek the Lord. In the night my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord's, sorry. sorry. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love ceased forever? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? And I say, it is my grief that the right hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. <clears throat> With your strong arm, you redeem your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. When the water saw you, O oh God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea. Your path through the mighty waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Continue our readings in Acts chapter 23. In the morning, the Jews joined a conspiracy and bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they had killed Paul. There were more than 40 who joined in this conspiracy. 
they went to the chief priests and elders and said, we have strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we have killed Paul. Now then, you and the council must notify the tribune to bring him down to you on the pretext that you want to make more thorough examination of his case. And we are ready to do away with him before he arrives. Now, the son of Paul's sister heard about this ambush. So he went and gained entrance to the barracks and told Paul. Paul called one of the centurions and said, take this young man to the tribune for he has something to report to him. So he took him and brought him to the tribune and said, the prisoner Paul called me and asked me to bring this young man to you. He has something to tell you. The tribune took him by the hand, drew him aside privately and asked, what is it that you have to report to me? He answered, the Jews have agreed to ask you to bring Paul down to the council tomorrow, as though they were going to inquire more thoroughly into his case. But do not be persuaded by them, for more than 40 of their men are lying in ambush for him. They have bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they kill him. They are ready now and are waiting for your consent. So the tribune dismissed the young man, ordering him, tell no one that you have informed me of this. Then he summoned two of the centurions and said, get ready to leave by nine o'clock tonight for Caesarea with 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen. <laughs> also provide mounts for Paul to ride and take him safely to Felix the governor. He wrote a letter to this effect, Claudius Lysias to his excellency, the governor Felix, greetings. This man was seized by the Jews and was about to be killed by them. But when I had learned that he was a Roman citizen, I came with the guard and rescued him, since I wanted to know the charge for which they had accused him. I had him brought to their council. I found that he was accused concerning questions of their law, but was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. When I was informed that there was a plot against the man, I sent him to you at once, ordering his accusers also to state before you what they have against him. So the soldiers, according to their instructions, took Paul and brought him during the night to Antipatris. The next day, they let the horsemen go on with him while they returned to the barracks. And when they came to Caesarea, they delivered the letter to the governor. He presented Paul also before him. On reading the letter, he asked what province he belonged to. And when he learned that he was from Cilicia, he said, I will give you a hearing when your accusers arrive. Then he ordered that he be kept under guard in Herod's headquarters. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey, thanks, John, for, for reading um, about this situation involving Paul's sister's son, was it? Mm. Paul's nephew. So, um, John, before we were, uh, before we went online, you were saying uh, that you, you like this reading, you love this reading. Do you want to say a bit more about why that is? Well, I, th I think the, the, the courage of a, um, of a young man, we don't know how young or how old he was, um, but I like to think of him as being a, um, a well-grown boy, a teenager, perhaps. Um, but he heard this and, and he was concerned. Uh, and he went to Paul and Paul went to the governor. And 
uh, amazing the way things things happen, uh, and we think this is how uh, the life of faith works. Uh, often in difficult situations, someone unexpected comes forward, um, mm. and it changes the the situation. Um, and we and we continue praying, and uh, yeah. But at times we're called on to do things that are, are, are difficult. It must have been a scary thing to go after Paul to the centurion and then the tribune, a very powerful man able to make decisions and then passed on to the governor. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, John. And, you know, you can imagine sort of what's going through this this. Uh, young man's you know mind um, mm. when he's trying to make that decision about should I or shouldn't I you know I've heard yeah. this news I've, or I've overheard this news um, you know I, I feel like I need to do something about it but I'm not sure if I can but then making that decision to do it um, taking that risk and then yeah. um, seeing how it changes the course of, um, of of you know the next part of Paul's life uh, going and, to and Paul, not only, that, not only that, but also you know, sorry, John. Um, yeah, but not only that also gets um, entered into the Book of Acts, you know, which he probably <laughs> didn't anticipate yeah. us reading about it, you know, two thousand years later. Uh, when yeah. we take it back from the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, John. Go on. I think the scary thing must have been going to the centurions. I mean, the centurions were were rough, tough, fighting men. Um, who'd proved themselves and they were there to do a job and um, and to have this, this boy with this story going to them, they had to decide what to do with it and uh, and decided to, to pass it on up the line. But yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I just feel the scariness in the story. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, it's well told, isn't it? Um, if anyone watching uh, has any comments or thoughts, um, please feel free to put them in the chat as always. Um, what, what does it make you think of in terms of our own situation here? Um, you know, the church in 2022, um, in the midst of the issues we're facing, are there things that we need to have courage about, to be brave about, to, to make those, you know, decisions to do the difficult thing and to be, I think the word people often use is disruptive, isn't it? Instead of allowing the cycles of of life to go on, um, you have to sometimes interrupt that cycle and to, to disrupt the the order of events in order for for the right thing to happen. Mm. Because the wrong thing will just continue to create a feedback loop where it will just keep reinforcing itself and won't ever change. And so you have to have someone who walks into that cycle and and um, disrupts it, stops it, or changes its direction. Do we see similar disruptive cycles and, and patterns happening around us? I, I think so. I mean, I felt very moved in this um, prayer meeting I was at yesterday to, to pray for the church generally all over the world, really. I mean, there's so much change going on which is, um, and so many people have to make big decisions um, when perhaps they've avoided having to make big decisions in the past and, uh, and, and kept on, just kept on going. But now they have to make decisions. And as, uh, as we at St. Jude have had to make decisions about what to do with the buildings, um, how we think about the finances of the future, um, how to think of uh, how the ministry team should be um, modified to meet current conditions. Ma massive mm -hmm. times for, for people in ministry all over the world and in every sort of Christian church, and probably affecting other religions as well, having to go through times yeah. of change. Yeah. But God is there and, uh, and, and comes to our aid if we look for him but if we don't look for him we don't see what he's doing hmm. i think it also has an impact on 
when we think about issues to do with mental health and how we help people um, and how people find help. I think if if you're someone who struggles um, with anxiety or depression or, or any number of, of health issues, um, it can feel like a spiral. You know, it can feel like a, a cycle that you go round and round that you, you feel like you can't get out of yourself. And you need someone to be able to um, come in and help and, and listen um, or to provide some medicine if, if needed. Um, but some way to support and to help interrupt that cycle as well. I mean, it's one of the things I've been thinking about in terms of our own things that we offer as a church, whether or not there is a space for us to meet, um, to talk about issues to do with mental health for, for people who would find that helpful at this time. Um, because the situations we're facing are not going to get better overnight. Um, mm -hmm. Not just situations we face individually, but situations we face <clears throat> in our community as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we need to be, to find, uh, does he have a name? <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Um, Paul's nephew. I don't think he does, does he? No, I don't think so. No. It's Sister, sister's son <laughs> yeah but to be brave like him you know in these situations and to ask the person who might be on their own you know how are you, and, you know, like do you need anything sorry Stuart go on um, it was lucky that Paul was a Roman citizen Otherwise, he wouldn't have had the um, protection that was required. And that was a huge amount of protection that was given to him. And it was interesting that that, that, that many soldiers and let me have a look. Uh, what was it? 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen and 200 spearmen. That's a, <laughs> that's a small little army. Yeah. Looking after Paul. All because he was a Roman citizen, mm. and that that this chap, the 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 um, Felix, found that he was accused concerning questions of Jewish law, but was charged with nothing deserving death or imprisonment. Yeah. So I thought that was a, a stroke of luck that he realised he was a Roman citizen, and that that really came to Paul's aid. Yeah. So it just goes to show that where you're placed in society has an effect on your life. Hmm. It's also being wise, isn't it? Knowing about what your, I guess in a sense, we, we might say what your rights, know, knowing your rights and what your mm. human rights are in this situation, in any mm. situation. That the, the laws, you know, when they're, they're at their best, are there to help, are designed to help um, to help people um, and so it's not it's not using them to our advantage but it's using the, using the laws when they're genuinely uh, to, to help protect us and to help protect people that are vulnerable in particular situations well let's um let's pray and um let's uh we'll, we'll ask god for for wisdom and how we can be people who are like Paul's nephew, you know, how can we be tuned in to know the, the needs, to know the needs and also to have the courage to, to follow through with responding to, to people in need as well. Mm. I don't think we welcomed Bill, did we? Nice to have him with us this morning. The international perspective. <laughs> Welcome, Bill. Good. What, what else can we be praying for? Georgina's family. Um, Georgina's um, beloved pet uh, passed away in a veterinary hospital last night um, from heart problems. Mm. So Stamps. Scampy, uh, uh, it was a cat, uh, her cat Scampy. Uh, uh, they tried to save him, but it, it was far too gone, and uh, he was only about eight or nine. He was quite a young cat. 
so it's uh, quite shocking and it'll be quite um, hard for Georgina and her family uh, with, with the loss of uh, Scampi. Yeah, we'll pray for Georgina. Also, um, sadly, we, we heard yesterday at the, the drop-in um, in the food bank that we were doing that um, one of the members that used to come all the time also um, passed away, a chap named Jeff. Um, I don't know if you remember Simon and Jeff, John, they, they used to come in together, but they're very good friends for the last 25 years or so. And, um, yeah, Jeff found out uh, they found him. Um, he had died in his apartment um, in his bed. So uh, just a couple of days ago, I'm good to pray for Simon as well. Well, let's, let's pray together. Continue to pray for London as, as John has reminded us. Gracious God, you call us to fullness of life. Deliver us from unbelief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, continue in prayer together. Lord, we pray for Gina and her family. Uh, as uh, I know that Scampi was a, a loved member of their family and um, had been present with them like a family member. And uh, we pray that uh, you bring them comfort at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Lord, continuing with it with the, the theme of the, the city, I want to pray for um, our Prime Minister, the Cabinet, um, the Mayor of London and other cities, local councils with all their responsibilities in rapidly changing times and worries about their finances and how to continue caring for the people that they're appointed to look after. Lord, help us to keep our minds on the people in responsibility, to pray for them, pray for wisdom for them, uh, and pray that people will look up to them and uh, help them find good ways through difficult times. We thank you that you are a God who cares. Help us to believe it, remember it, and trust it and we'll make decisions based on it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. yeah. We pray for uh, coming up. Uh, this Sunday for his uh, welcoming service at St. Mary's in Stoke Newington. And we pray that <clears throat> he would, uh, yes, we, we thank you for bringing him here to this part of London and thank you for his new role at St. Mary's as associate vicar. We pray that Sunday would be a happy occasion for, for all involved. Mm -hmm. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And Lord, we do lift up, um, Jeff before you in his life and we give you thanks for his life and um, we pray especially for Simon his his best friend and um, his family his wider family who are, are grieving his loss at this time and the people at the food bank and uh, we pray you'd help us to know how to respond um, well in this time and that uh, you give us wisdom to know um, how, how best to make contact with uh, with people who are hard to find contacts for. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord. Think of others who, who grieve at this time and just reminded of the, the family of Violet, long term member of our church, who died recently. 
We all go through periods of grieving, Lord, but help us to know how to support those we know who are grieving, um, to deal with their grief and to look to the future hand in hand with you. Mm. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Father, with William Hill, Bill Hill, we join together in our prayers for Victoria and her young daughter, who are two Ukrainians living in his home. And we also pray for the safety of their family in Kiev. May we uphold Victoria and her young daughter in our prayers this going week and their family in Kiev, and we also are praying for Vlad, who stayed with um, Bill, but is now back home. Mm -hmm. um, we also pray for Vlad's safety, and all the safety of those in the Ukraine region, Lord, where Russia is attacking most monstrously and devastatingly, Lord, mm -hmm. without care or concern for the public of those cities in Ukraine and the province of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Father, we just lift up Ukraine to you at this time. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. As our Savior, what we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May God grant to the world justice, truth, and peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of notices. Uh, we're back here on Friday morning at 9.15. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And uh, church this Sunday is not in the building due to uh, some asbestos works that we've got uh, planned. Um, but instead, as, as a happy coincidence, our brother Prakash is going to be licensed um, at St. Mary's, Stoke Newington, you can see there, and that's at 10.30 um, a.m., so slightly earlier time uh, than our service, but that's this coming Sunday, 10.30 a.m. That's the church with the spire opposite Thistle Park, Many of you will know it. Um, any other notices, Stuart? Yes. Uh, say we are at the House of Children and Families Worker. And uh, all the details are on our website. So do head to our website. If you um, are interested in yourself or you know someone who might be coming to work with us, it's a full time post shared between two churches that are uh, next, almost next door, next door to each other, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, please pray for that as well the next few weeks. The closing date is 31st of October, the end of this month. Thank you, everyone. And uh, some of you Friday, if not uh, Sunday. Yeah. Good. Bye. Bye. Bye.